morning. Good morning, little one. Where are you going? Glasgow. Glasgow. Gonna eat some fried Mars bar. Probably not, because you're off for a bit of posing practice. No. Two weeks out? Uh, yeah. Two, two weeks, weeks today. Two weeks from the show today. Yeah. Got some plastic. Looking at your plastic. I've got a cut here. Yeah, there's pretty bird on them. I was kind of hoping to get a minor cut so I could use them. <laughs> oh no. What are you doing? I don't know. How are you making a plaster implementation difficult? <laughs> working. <sighs> Makes all the boo-hoos go away. <laughs> Just you and me, girls. Look at the desperation in their eyes. Bye, girls. Daddy will look after you, I promise. She, she, Sorry, she's sorry. not got faith. Uh oh, Rox. You're on your own with the pops. Once I've got the camera, let me just show you a quick standard breakfast I'm having at the moment. Arla, 20 grams of protein. Now, don't fall for this advertising. It's 10 grams per 100, 20 grams per 200. It's one of those blinking per serving gimmicks but still high protein and it actually does taste like lemon it doesn't taste like quark a big bowl of micros blueberries strawberries pineapple normally there'd be raspberries in there but i ran out that's my usual morning breakfast this is your usual blah, 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 this is my usual morning hair and i need a brew an englishman does not function well without a brew ah oh, let the day begin okay come on then Is the beds it will do literally anything for a biscuit. Go, there we go. There you go, little jailbird. Okie dokie. It's a beautiful day outside, which is great. But it's Sunday, and I'm off to take my granddad out for a beer. Because since he got out of hospital, he is well again. It's little things, little things go a long way in other people's lives. Little things that might not seem huge to you make a big deal to them. So I've committed every Sunday. Now we have a routine to take my granddad out for a beer. We chat, we chill out, and in the two weeks I've been doing it, there has been a noticeable up change in his positivity. He started doing more, he's even started eating different foods and trying more outside of his normal little routine. If you could do that for something, if you could help someone, just a little bit to feel, yeah. just a little bit more boosted. That is your challenge for today. Do one good thing for someone today. Because today I'm sacrificing going to the gym to upload this video for you guys and to take my pops out for a beer. Because those two things more important than a single day that revolves around me. It's a great way to think. They see me rolling, hey Tim, here we go. Got pops. Oh, we're here. Yeah, we're here, pops. Well done. Thank you. What do you reckon? Nice? That one's a chocolate and roasted dark blend. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I'm nice, but I'm not a threat. I'm staying down low. Oh, he's not too short. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Uh, good beer. No, I said it. Early morning start. Right, that's it. Uh, up with the biddly bobster. I'm going to shoot out. I'm about to go get some new tyres for my car. Lady's munching some new protein banana bread that she's made. Check out Lady's Kitchen, find out stuff. Okay, keys. Banana bread. Oh shit, oh it's mushy. I've only done about 2,000 miles on these and somehow I've scrubbed them already. So uh, yeah. I promise you, I've been driving sensibly. I have, I haven't been, I haven't been screwing it around. I don't know, anyway. Gonna go get his tires put on, then go to BMW, drop off the car, pick up the courtesy car from BMW that I'm getting for two days whilst this is in getting all work done on it. And then we'll go to the gym. So I've gone from rude boy Coop boy, tearing up tires for two and a half thousand miles to family man with two kids and a dog and no balls. <laughs> so jobs in the morning, now I'm gonna get a quick bite of food to eat because I've had a fasted morning. A decent amount of carbs, I'm gonna take in at least 80, 80 grams of carbohydrate, and probably around about 10 grams of fat, then go hit up some squats. Been feeling very tight recently around the old <laughs> things here, if you are feeling little things, is be aware to get yourself warmed up. Worst things I do is go to the gym thinking, right, I'm going to be an hour, and really I've got to do 20 minutes of warm up. But then I get there and I'm like, ah, it's 12 o'clock, I'm going to be done by one. Meh, yeah, skip the warm up. But you keep doing that over time, shit builds up. Time allocation. Time allocation is key.
This is my lowish volume, kind of easily stomached breakfast that also gets a lot of good carbs, micros, and health in there. So my strawberries, pineapples, high protein yogurt, a little bit of honey on the top, toast with butter and marmite, because I genuinely enjoy this. Plus, this is actually a protein bread, it's Dr. Zach's protein bread, so there's 20 grams of protein between these two slices of bread, plus some decent fats in there from the seeds and whole meal and things that are in that. So, it gives me a good amount of macros, but it's not a huge volume of food. So when I go and squat, it's not gonna make me feel sick, it's not gonna make me feel bloated, it's not gonna make me feel like a big, fat mubba tubba. So we eat this, kit up, gym, back here, just put out a tweet to you guys asking if you had any burning questions about what you want to know about. And that's what we're going to finish today's vlog on, answering some of those questions for you to help you get set for the summer, no doubt. Let me eat. Bugger off. Some people were asking me again online, and I did cover this a little bit before in the podcast. If you haven't listened to the podcast, listen to the podcast. Links and everything for that will be below. But some people were asking me if pre-workouts are a good idea. Let me quickly buzz through this. Yes but not all the time, especially the stim-based ones. If you're taking a lot of stimulants all the time, you're gonna smash your beta receptors down, you're gonna lose that buzz that you get from the stimulus of the caffeine and those stimulants that are in there, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Only utilize those on days where you're really gonna go hard or you feel like you need it or perk it up. Don't become mentally reliant on pre-workouts. Get it in your head that you haven't taken anything and then you feel a little bit down, feel a little bit flat, feel like your training's not gonna go well because you haven't taken that, and you know, negative feedback loop. That's what we don't want, we want positive feedback loops. Same thing goes for also the physiological side of things. You don't want something on deadlift day, squat day, you don't want something that's gonna pump you out and affect your mobility. That's when there's horses for courses, different things come into play. So like today, I'm going to squat. So this is what I'm taking today. I'm not taking the PSI, I'm taking the RPM from EHP. That's because this one is focus and stimulants, no pump. When I'm gonna go in and do something like chest and I want that pump and that blood flow, that's when I take the PSI because that's no stims, but pump and blood flow. So, make sure that you're using the right thing for the right days as well, but also don't use them every day. Make sense? So, squat days, deadlift days, you want stims, no pump. Check out as well, mobility, I'm gonna go through some of that today. Just some different ones that I didn't show in the other video. So check out the squat video if you want to know about that. There's a full on squat video, link in the description again. I'm gonna show you a couple of little extra quick things today that I utilize as well to help me uh, get prepped for the squat. And then I'll just show you the best of my squat, which will hopefully be decent, because I've had a bit of a tight, boop, boop, yeah. Tight groin, tight hip flexors, been a bit shitty. Hopefully we'll get over that today. Anyway, right, let's go. So quick look at this mobility work I'm talking about. And the first one here is the leg swings. Super simple, very effective. But the goal here is to keep your torso facing forward whilst you swing through. So don't allow your torso to rotate. And that's why I'm keeping my hand on my stomach there. You can see me doing it. Then from here, same thing. Kickbacks, bring your knee high, kicking back through your heel. This is activating the glutes. Again, don't let your lower back arch. Then stretching out the glutes, grip your ankle like you can see me doing here and pull your legs so that it's in line with the hips because it'll tend to kick in a little bit. Stretch it that way and then finish off with another 10 seconds pulling tight through with the knee. Drive the opposite leg towards the wall, keeping it nice and flat. Really good stretch for the glute. And then mobility wise, again, then do these kick throughs. So you're keeping your kicking your heel through towards the wall. And obviously do this on both legs. Kind of do three sets on every single one. Now here we're looking for putting myself into the squat position using the leg press with a light weight and letting it push the weight through, which is opening up on my hips. Then I do that with each single leg. Be very careful here not to chop off your other leg. And then again, this is helping to stretch out, open up the hips and really loosen off the groin. So if you tend to be tight there, this one I found really, really effective. So once you've done all your mobility, then it's time to get under the weight, but don't jump straight in, do some warming sets. So I did warmings on 60 kilograms and I did around eight reps on this, 8 to 10 I think it was, then jumped up to 80 kilograms and I did two sets of 80 of eight reps and in that time I'm thinking about load displacement, body posture, all the rules I talked about in the previous squat video, if you haven't watched that, link is in the description. Then what I did was going to working sets, started at 90 kilos, did one set on that, one set on 95 and then three sets at 100. I did 130 was my max lift but there's progression this week because I was able to do 100 for three sets for five reps with no knee sleeves and no belt, and that's progression. This is why I'm wild, wild, wild. This my motherfucking style, style, style. Ever since I was a child, child, child. I've been fucking wild, wild, wild. This is why I'm wild, wild, wild. This my motherfucking style. Hey. 
Woo! So there we go. Big push for time. Squats done, seven sets. 100 reps on the leg extensions. Carbs, seven sets. And I'm just gonna give credit to my man here, Hash. So we're at Better Bodies Gym at the moment. I can't, I can't take credit for another man's work. So the video we just posted up, three pound hack for bicep training, it was his idea. I can't take credit for it. Now, I'm not gonna tell you, but to guess how old he is, put it in the comment section below, and I'll tell you in the next video, we're gonna do a podcast together, because I'll give you a hint. He was around for the golden era, and you are how many weeks out now? Oh, five. And five weeks out. So not only are we gonna do that, we're gonna have a chat about the golden era training on the podcast, and some little hints and tips that he has from the old school days, but also sneak peeks at his physique at the age that I'll tell you next time. Yes? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably older than your granddad's, but uh, okay. I'm not holding the gun to his head, he is voluntarily doing this. Anyway, right, let's get home because now I've got to get massaged and I'm late. So, made it home and I'm back with Rebecca. So, she's currently massaging out lower back. Yep, that's my butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's super important to make sure you get yourselves massaged because it helps with recovery and other stuff and stops you tightening up and will stop progressive injuries getting worse. Yes? So I hope you've enjoyed the vlog so far. These vlogs are gonna be up every Thursday. So your Tuesday and your Sunday videos are gonna be more training orientated. And this middle week video, the Thursdays, is gonna be the vlogs. Now Sarah's gonna finish on your Twitter questions that I put up the other day. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do some quick fire answers. And so I have no idea what's coming. So we'll see. How to keep motivation if you don't show any progress for a couple of weeks. Okay, first things first, things don't take weeks, they take months and years. So progress from week to week is tiny. So little things are progress. Just like in this video that you saw, I did squats without needing knee sleeves or a belt at 100 kilos. Now, that's not the heaviest that I can lift. I can lift heavier than that. But a couple of weeks ago, I needed sleeves and a belt on there to stop feeling like I was awkward and in pain when I was lifting that 100 because the weight would displace wrongly. So that's progression. So the weight might not have got heavier to do those five rep sets, but the way in which I do those sets has got better. That's progression. So don't be too hard on yourselves. Plus, always be analyzing. If there's something you've done wrong, fix it. Sliders with socks, yes or no? In England, yeah, because it's freaking freezing. If you're anywhere with sunshine, no. When are you releasing the new denim? Okay, the new DSR lines, the new denim lines. I'm gonna put those up in about seven days time. Stay tuned to the Instagram. Links and everything will be in the description for the website and things like that. So we have two new jeans launching. They are a standard rise, whereas the ones we released previously were like a bit of a drop crotch, a bit of relaxed around the... <laughs> Call me Woody Woodpecker. Not pecker as in that meaning, no. Moving on. So two new jeans we're releasing. They're gonna be distressed, heavily distressed for the blues, and then there's a washed gray version, which is lightly distressed. Same taper down to the ankle, but they've got a lower rise, meaning they fit more like a standard skinny fit jean, but with a better taper, no bagging, no sagging, or comfort and full mobility. Plus three new t-shirts. So there's gonna be the white one you might see me wearing with the DSR logo just here, nice and simple, with a black little label on the bottom. Then there's going to be the black with the white, the Time Is Now logo, which you've seen. If you've been on Instagram, you'll have seen that one already, plus I think I wore one here. And then there's a really cool one that you haven't seen yet, which has a huge back print on it, and it's like an acid wash kind of black and creamy color. You'll see what I mean, it's freaking cool. In a week, one week, stay tuned. Lex, how do you get back after say a two week virus? Go back in slow, take longer rest periods, make sure your diet is bang on track. Get straight back to eating properly like you should be, but then training integrated in slower, um, taking longer rest periods, maybe do um, lower volume, but more body parts on a day. Take it slow and steady. Don't expect to be 100% straight away. Give it about a week to get back into it, but your food, that should be back up to 100%. That's your prime one, that's your fuel, that's your goal. How do you slide into someone's, <laughs> how do you slide into someone's DMs? <laughs> Dick pic. Your opinion on naked smoothies and innocent smoothies, can they be used as a fruit replacement or are they a no-go? Right, for me, I would say no-go because they're such high impact. Like for 100 mil of those innocent smoothies, it's crazy amounts of carbohydrate. Whereas if you eat the actual fruit itself, you're going to be more fulfilled, it's less carbs, and I don't know if they're heavily processed, but we don't know. Let's assume they are. So eat the fruit, make your own. I work nights and go to the gym after my night shift has finished. What eating pattern do you suggest for bulking? So you're gonna to have to calculate extra calories for the extra hours that you stay up if you're doing night shifts. Because I know sometimes you guys roll over from like a day into a night, so you'll end up staying up for like 20 odd or more hours. So make sure that you're calculating extra calories for those extra hours awake. Other than that, it's just consistency. Make sure your calories are right. Don't eat too heavily above your maintenance. Maybe around about 200 calories above maintenance and see how you go on that, especially if your job's quite sedentary. Hope that helps. How to stay active and get some sort of workout in while working away from home hotel workouts or anything. Okay, so get used to looking up 
uh, calisthenics workouts, body weight workouts, anything that stimulates the muscle is going to help you. So pause reps, so if you're doing press ups, hold them down for five seconds. Do the, the Sally song, you know the one, the army one. Bring Sally up, bring Sally down. Anything that stimulates the muscle, gets the blood flowing, gets you active is sweet. Don't panic too much. Diet is more important when you're traveling. Keep your diet in key, everything else will stay there. Just because you flatten off and soften off because you're not getting in the gym and lifting heavy weights, doesn't mean you're losing size or mass. You're just gonna look flatter, so be aware of that too. Okay, Johnny Stormbreaker. Is that your actual name? Unless it's like your real name, Johnny Raincloud. <laughs> How do you make sure you get in a great workout? I work out for like one hour and have 45 seconds rest, so I don't know if it's in my head. It's in your head, mate. If you're just doing wakes, 45 minutes to an hour when you're on your own, it's absolutely fine. Hour and a quarter, hour and a half if you're with a training partner. Get some music on that gets the goosebumps lifting on your arms, gets the blood flowing, gets you in that little zone, and they'll help you push a little bit harder, maybe even take less rest period because you'll just feel like getting up and going. But yeah, you're good, don't worry, in your head. All things Tom, I'm currently training for a marathon, however, after this I want to keep a high cardio level, but try to put on some size. How would you go about this? Um, without having a dirty bulk. You've got to go on a lean gain, so you have to calculate your calories. Again, like I said, just go a bit above your maintenance level and stick there, and then if your activity goes up, your food goes up alongside it. It's a balancing act. Like, if you're really, really active, like crazy active, you'd have to eat a crazy amount of food to then start gaining weight. So you have to balance the food with your activity levels. So if you want to stay fit and you're going to be running, calculate how many calories you're burning during your runs and make sure you replenish those calories after the run. That way you keep the fitness, but you're obviously not going to be chewing up into your energy stores like your muscle and your glycogen. Sweet. <laughs> Chase Dalman. Thanks for asking. Here's my burning question. Do you like refrigerators? And then there's a YouTube link. I haven't got time to watch a YouTube link, but I do like refrigerators. They house most of my favorite things. Food and ice cream and milk and cheese and pate and crackers. Crackers don't go in the fridge, but they go well with crackers. And so does cheese. Mmm, cheese. Will you be a body power? Possibility of meetups in the north? How do you like your eggs? But seriously, I hate eggs. But would you love to get more in my diet? Any ideas? <laughs> if you hate them, don't eat them. It's simple, you don't need them. They're actually quite low in protein for the value of what they are. The only thing is, is the yellows, which most people throw away, actually have good fat and good cholesterol in them. So um, maybe keep the yellows in because it tastes nicer, but don't have more than like two a day and just accept they have more fats in them. So take those out of your macros. Uh, will we be at Body Power? No, but we will be in Birmingham the same weekend at a pop-up store for Gymshark. So I will try and set up something. I do have an idea to do like some kind of um, gym talk things and arrange it but it's just a lot going on at the moment because we're trying to move and all that kind of crap but stay tuned yes but Birmingham same weekend we'll be there just at a pop-up store any advice for someone just starting yeah um, concentrate on your compound work you're gonna be wobbly don't worry about it forget about everybody else in the gym they don't really matter to you unless they're gonna help you out with what you're doing doesn't matter that someone else can lift more weight than you it's irrelevant to you it has no effect on you do you make sure that you're progressing week to week don't ego lift make sure your technique and your food or your priorities. Okay. What's your opinion on rest versus active recovery? If you feel like you want to do something, go do something. If you feel bollocks, sit down. I read an article that says you should be doing between 60 and 120 reps for major muscle groups and between 30 and 60 for smaller ones in a week. In your opinion, is this enough volume for muscle growth? Why? Are they assuming that you've worked the smaller ones during the bigger ones and then you're doing them as accessories? In which case, yes, but if you haven't done the bigger ones and you're just working the accessories you, and you want to do bodybuilding, then no. Basically, do between 6 to 10 or 8 to 12 reps on something. On your compound movements, try and do somewhere between 6 to 10 and lift heavier. And on your isolations, focus on the mind to muscle and contraction. That's just squeezing and that focusing on that single part of the muscle. Because like when you're doing the compounds, you need to be focusing on the technique, the drive and the power because you're using more than one muscle group. And then on the isolations, it's one muscle group to concentrate on the contraction. Huda! Zach Brookwell, who would win in a fist fight? Predator with no gadgets or Mike Tyson in his prime? I'm going Predator. Dude was like seven feet tall, got claws, mass teeth, and he's gonna fight dirty. Like, Tyson bites ears off, Predator bit bites faces off. So, I'm going Predator. Would you do another MMA training video in the future? Yes, uh, definitely will be in the future, but first off, it's gonna be the boxing for that white collar boxing match that I wanna do. So it'll be more boxing oriented in the next part of when we do that fight series style thing. Although I am doing something cool with Gymshark to do with MMA. Shh.
Fasting, could it be beneficial for fat loss and muscle gain maintenance? Okay, let's just squash this one now. The intermittent fasting thing, right? The most reason people see results from it is because they're being more consistent. Because all of a sudden they're thinking about when they're eating their food in an eight hour thing. Whereas when they're just leaving their day to like do things willy nilly, they were kind of eating sporadically, finishing eating at different times of day, waking up looking different, didn't have, a, didn't have the same day, day after day. So all of a sudden they're doing intermittent fasting, they have to eat in an eight hour window. Now all of a sudden they're doing the same thing each day and get results because of the fasting. You're not getting results because of the fasting, you're getting results because of your consistency. So uh, in terms of muscle and that, it was never even designed for that. The intermittent fasting was actually designed for cellular repair, not muscular repair. Is it more beneficial? In my opinion, no. Is it going to harm you? Definitely not. Like, but whatever works better for your lifestyle. Summer is coming. Any advice on adjusting workouts to fit a focus less on gaining and more maintaining once you begin to tighten up eating? Right, um, everything about maintaining or gaining is diet. Training stay, can stay exactly the same all the way through the year and you can gain or cut regardless. But obviously, in gains you would expect to get stronger because you've got more energy to do that. Whereas when you cut, you'd expect to try and just kind of maintain your strength levels because obviously less fat around the joints and all that kind of thing to be able to push against heavier weight. As a rule, training can stay exactly the same. Diet controls it all. Can you recommend your top six exercises to improve vertical jump form? No. No idea, dude. I just remember people used to buy those weird shoes with like a, a front heel on them and they'd bounce around and they'd claim that to help you with your jump. Um, but other than that, nah, I, I got nothing, dude. Are you going to grow your beard back? Maybe. So that's it. That's it for this vlog. Thank you all very much. I'll see you on Sunday for the next training video. Don't know what it is yet. I've got a couple in the, in the old backlog, ready to roll, ready to rock and roll for you guys. So let me know in the comments section what you'd like to see. Thanks for all the support. Make sure to hit that notification bell if you haven't. Some of you were saying that the notification, it, you click it and it says you'll get notified um, occasionally or something like that. If you go into your settings, into your notifications, you can, you can then do it like on the back end of your login, whatever. Go in the settings, go to your notifications. On there, you can actually change to get um, push notifications all the time. You can get them via push notification on your phone, email and whatnot. So for any channels that you have been missing and you want to see them, go into those settings and change the notifications directly on there to receive a notification every time, then you will miss nothing. So until Sunday, hope you're having a great week. I'll catch you in the next one. Do something nice for somebody. Let me know what it was in the comment section below. I've been Lex and we are out. Boom, baby. Don't